Hey Tigers, welcome to your digital reteach for on balance forces. This digital reteach will look at Texas Essential Knowledge and Skill 8.6a. In this TEEK is your job to demonstrate and also calculate how on balance forces change the speed or direction of an object's motion. And for most students, it's usually that calculate part that trips them up. Not always, but that's usually the sticking point. The first thing you need to make sure you understand is how to get credit for this reteach. The first thing you need to do is make sure you're using the Cornell Note worksheet that your teacher gave you or sent you to go get. Use that while you're watching this video and make sure that's getting filled out completely. Make sure you're taking notes and answering any questions and then writing your summary. Show your completed Cornell Note worksheet to your teacher when you finish and they will give you more information about your next opportunity to retest. The first thing we want to look at is a force diagram. A lot of times when these are done in class, they use just a standard square to represent any object. But you gotta remember, really that square represents some object. So for a force diagram, let's start with something as simple as a book starting at rest. So this copy of The Hobbit is just sitting on my desk. In the event that if something pushes down on the book, probably gravity, and it pushes down on the book with five newtons of force, and the desk pushes right back with another five newtons of force. In an example like this, that's five newtons pushing down, five newtons pressing up, that's going to cancel each other out. And we call that a balanced force. Anytime forces are balanced, the net force is going to be zero because there's no difference between the forces. It's like saying positive five minus five. It comes out to zero, they cancel. In this example, the book started at rest and the book will also stay at rest and it will not move. It will not change its motion because the forces are balanced. When forces are balanced, whatever the object was doing is going to keep doing that same thing. In this example, it was staying at rest. And at this example, it's going to start and stay. It's just not going to go anywhere. It's just there. Another example would be something like a ball starts at rest. And then there's two students that go after the ball. One student kicks the ball with 10 newtons to the right. And their student on the other side of the ball also kicks it, but with less force. They kick it with six newtons to the left. In this example, the forces are unbalanced. They don't match. They do not cancel each other out. So in this example, if we think about it, you've got 10 going to the right and six going to the left. So if we take 10 and we subtract six to find the difference, that will give us our net force. In this example, we have four newtons and the net force would go to the right. So we expect this ball to accelerate to the right and it should start to accelerate and move away. So with an unbalanced force, you will have acceleration. You will have some change in motion. And that direction should go in the direction of the greater force. All right, well those force diagrams are usually a little bit more simpler and most students usually get those pretty well. Usually where this starts to get a little more difficult is when you work with the formula force equals mass times acceleration. Now this formula is very often taught when a teacher begins teaching Newton's laws of force and acceleration or Newton's second law. So if you haven't studied this in class yet, it's coming. There's a chance though that your teacher's already introduced you to it because the calculation part that we talked about earlier is specifically in this Texas Essential Knowledge and Skill. So when we think about this, one of the really tricky parts is when you practice these in science, the math that is needed, you should be able to do without a calculator. Now, that doesn't mean the math is easy, and that doesn't mean you remember every step, but they will use math skills, which you have been taught. Generally speaking, the math is usually difficult sixth grade math or earlier, but if you don't practice using stuff like long division very much, that might be the place where you struggle. So at the end of the video, I'll give you some additional math help if you need it, and just give you a couple ideas for what you can do. All right, first off, if you also just want more help on this idea, because it's also under Newton's second law, I've got another video that's called 8.6C, Newton's Laws Digital Reteach, and that video is also in the same channel. So if you want to go back and look at that later, you can see some additional help for this. All right, let's start with a basic one. So here's a question that was used a couple years back, and this is another force diagram, 
that kind of has F equals MA in it, but not very heavy calculation. This is why I would consider a very easy calculation problem. So this says, the diagram below shows a boat moving north in a river at three meters per second, while the current is of the river moves south at one meter per second. So we see those numbers right here. The river is going down, the boat's going up to the north. So where this gets a little tricky is they're gonna change the numbers on us, but they're not gonna change the diagram. So they wanna know how things are gonna change. So how will the boat be affected if it enters a part of the river where the current is moving south at two meters per second? So we have to imagine that now the current speeds up. So if you understand the relationship, you understand basically that it has to fight more. So if I'm looking at it like that, the boat still only has the power to go three meters per second, and there's nothing changing in the boat. Only the river changed. So the river is now pressing harder against the boat, but the boat's still working the same that it was ever doing. So in this case, what we need to think about is what's going to happen to the boat. Well, if you think about it like a force diagram, or if you start to even plug in numbers into the formula if you'd like to use that, which in this case you don't need to, it's going to be kind of obvious to you that basically the boat's going to change something. And think about marking that on your notes. All right, let's up the game here. This one is not so much through a force diagram. This one is more through the formula traditionally. In this example, I picked one where the math is difficult, but you still get multiple choice answer choices. A lot of times that won't be the case. So this one says a student uses a magnet to move a 0 0.2, 0, I'm sorry, I got started on that one so much, 0 0.025 kilogram metal ball. The magnet exerts a force of 5 newtons, which causes the ball to begin moving. What is the acceleration of the ball? So I'm going to work this one out in another video here. See if you can follow along and see how far you get. The following is one of those examples that comes from the STAR test. This was released a couple years back, and this will give you a good idea of just how difficult the math can be at times. Well, what I want you to think about on this question is where are you getting stuck? Are you getting stuck on the idea behind the science, like understanding what you need to find? Or are you actually getting stuck on the mechanics of doing the math? In the event that you're getting stuck on the math, and we'll mention this a couple times, you really do need to seek out help for that. Um, I'll give you some tips for the math later on in this video, but for now, let's work on this problem. So this one says a student uses a magnet to move a 0.025 kilogram metal ball. The magnet exerts a force of 5 newtons, which causes the ball to begin moving. What is the acceleration of the ball when it begins to move? So with a problem like this, always think about what you do need to find. And this problem flat out tells me what is the acceleration. So that's what I'm looking for. Things that the problem gave me, it gave me the mass right here the 0 0.025 kilograms. Kilograms is for mass. And it tells me right over here the force of 5 newtons. So as always, I want to begin with my equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. Usually we just write that as force equals ma. Next thing I need to do is just substitute in the numbers that I do have. So for force, it was 5 newtons. So I'll put a 5 there. The mass was 0 0.025, and I still need to find the acceleration. So before I go any further, looking at this formula, if you can get this far, then you pretty much have a good understanding of the science. So really, if you get stuck anywhere after here, it's probably the math that you need to work on. So speaking of the math. Just like in my math classes, I really don't like the fact that there is other things with this variable. So what I want to do is I want to work on isolating this variable. I want that letter A all by itself. So for that, I need to do the inverse operation. So what we mean by that is here we're multiplying 0 0.025 times A. So I want to do the opposite of multiplication and do division. If I do that, I can divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.025. As soon as I do that, these cancel out 
and I am now left with 5 divided by 0 0.025 equals the acceleration. Now the next most obvious part that could be difficult for people here is dividing without a calculator. It's one of those just odd things in science class you don't get a calculator, in math you do. So for eighth grade science that is a challenge we have to overcome. The good news is the math that you're being asked to do is technically sixth grade math and a little bit before that. The bad news is it's still something that's easy to mess up. So I'm going to set this up in terms of long division. So if I look at it and set this up, I have 0 0.025 and I have 5. So 5 divided by 0 0.025. How many 0 0.025s go into 5 is my question that I need to figure out. Now, depending on how good you are with moving decimal points around, this also can change things. So I'm going to add in a decimal point here so I can get ready to move it. I'm just going to simplify the problem. So if I move this decimal point one, two, three spots to the right, that'll turn into a 25. Now I need to do the same thing over here. I need to move this one, two, three spots. So if I move the decimal point over there, that turns into 5,000. All right, now I've got numbers that are a little bit more manageable and a little bit simpler for me. So I'm going to rewrite this over here just so I have some more space to work with it. So I've got 5,000 divided by 25. In other words, how many 25s go into 5,000? Now if I'm looking over here at my answer choices. In this example, it's going to be pretty obvious what my answer is. I do want to go all the way through this because just in case if this was a gridable answer choice where you had to put the numbers in, you would still need to know what to do. So in this case, if I start thinking about how many 25s can go into 5? Well, the answer is none. That just doesn't work. So if I take the next set of numbers, how many 25s go into 50? Oh, well, that goes in two times. So I'll be really careful where I put the number. So two 25s go into 50. So if I work that out, subtract that, then I'm done. Then it's just a matter of being finished there and remembering to put the remaining zeros up here. And there's my answer, 200. 200 25s going to 5,000. So in other words, my acceleration is 200 meters per second squared. And this example, that makes my answer a letter choice A. So as we've seen, the math can get a little bit difficult on these problems. Okay, so in terms of science, that's all we have for this video. Now, if you found the last problem and you're sitting there saying to yourself, that's exactly where I'm getting lost. It's math like that that's hard. You do need to go get some help before you run out of time because that skill is passing you by and you're missing opportunities to get that taken care of. So one of the easy resources that you can always go to is check with your math teacher and just show this video to them or just part of the video to them so they can see an example of the problem and they can probably help you as they know your math strengths and weaknesses. And any math teacher will probably be happy to help you because you're bringing something outside to them that you really want to work on. It's a great resource to take if you head to their tutoring sessions. Now, if you can't make the tutoring sessions, if you just have too much going on after school or before school, if you haven't checked out the Khan Academy website, this is probably one of the greatest websites ever invented. In the Khan Academy website, you have tutorial videos for just about everything you could ever dream of. Most videos are about five minutes long. Obviously, some are longer. I've got a link here for one that is about dividing decimals, and I'll put that link in the description to the video you're watching right now so you can just click on it. But head over to Khan Academy if you're still struggling with the math because they can give you lots of help and walk you through examples. The man who puts these videos together is, does a really good job of making things about as simple as you can make it. You just have to take it upon yourself to do some practice.